Hello, welcome to YCFT. We've just finished watching Sting, which is an Australian horror movie about a giant spider. Australian horror seems to be on the up and up in the world, which is quite fun. Mm -hmm. Directed by Kaya Roche Turner, Sting is about a young girl called Charlotte, played by Alila Brown, who is also in Furiosa. So this is a pretty big month. Pretty big year for her. Pretty big year for her. She's a bit of a menace in her apartment block where most of her family seems to live in different apartments. And she just goes this strange little spider and keeps it as a pet and starts feeding it and starts growing at an exponential rate and going off on its own to find bigger and bigger prey. This movie is basically alien. <laughs> Let's be real. It's heavily inspired by alien with a bit of arachnophobia, eight-legged freaks, and a little bit of little shop of horrors thrown in there. Surprisingly. As well. Yeah, surprisingly. <laughs> you were a little bit apprehensive about watching this one. I was a little bit trepidatious about this one. I Listen, I love spider movies. Arachnophobia is one of my favourites. A Legged Freaks is one of your favourites as love well. I Legged Freaks. It wasn't that I thought the trailer was bad. On the contrary, I saw the trailer and it just activated my heebie-jeebies to, to an insane level. So I was I was a little bit nervous about seeing this in the cinema. Generally, I would just like to say that I am, I'm fine with creepy crawlies. I am the spider catcher in, in the flat. You know, I will get rid of them. But, you know, this, this, this trailer, there was, I don't know what it was. This one just kind of gave me the willies a little bit. But having said that, very happy we did go and see this film because I thought it was great. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a great monster movie. I don't even know if it deserves to be called a B-movie, just by definition of the fact that it is a monster movie, because the production value was high for me. I thought the acting was pretty good all round. Spider effects, the kills were pretty good. There's one kill in particular that re- like I literally had to... I could not watch the, the screen. I even like closed... I did the child thing, you know, when you close your eyes and then you cover your ears, because it was just a bit too gruesome for me. I loved it really loved this movie well that's high praise from sam right there i also i also had a really good time in this one i thought the atmosphere was really good yeah i said the spider effects really good some really good use of shadows a lot of cool visual effects with practical effects in there Mm. it was funnier than we expected to be but it's not was a comedy it's like if we look at the two great spider movies eight legged freaks and arachnophobia it leans more towards the arachnophobia side of comedy in which there's some funny characters but the spiders themselves are not inherently funny yeah There's funny characters, there's funny dialogue, even some funny kind of situations. I also think that this is a director whose filmography I'm not very familiar with. I think this is probably his biggest feature to date. But he knows what he's doing with with the genre, I I think, for for sure. Um, So he played with expectations. He surpassed expectations for me in some ways. But I also will say that from watching the trailer, I was not expecting it to be as funny, actually, as as it was. And when I say funny, yeah, it's it's blackly comical. There are some macabre, but funny macabre moments in it. But yeah, I guess that also follows the tradition of arachnophobia, of eight-legged freaks, of the big spider, spider movies. There's always a little bit of funny in there as well, which I really appreciated. It's probably to help all those people with actual arachnophobia yeah. be able to make their way through the movie but yeah this film is definitely made by people who appreciate creature features this is this harkens back to old school creature features and even references actually just a ton of universal monster movies like there's a character called helga who is always watching old universal monster movies on the tv mm. which was that was that was a great little guessing game for us trying to work out what it was she was watching so that was fun i really appreciated it i'm gonna go into a couple of like what i class as a little bit negatives because mm-hmm. i don't think this movie will be for everybody no i think some people might <laughs> think it's a bit slow Okay. Personally, I think it was a bit long by about mm. 10 minutes. It's only an hour and a half. Mm. So maybe it's premised in quite stretch for the full like runtime of, of the fair. movie. The spy design itself is cool when it's smaller, but I think as it got bigger, based on what you find out about the origins of the spider, I think if they could have made it look a bit funkier as it got a bit bigger, that yeah, could have been I, okay, I agree with that. a bit of fun because ultimately we have a very dark spider in some very dark environments. And you pointed out, said, oh, does this apartment block have a problem with electricity? Because no one has appropriate lightning in it. <laughs> lighting in any of their homes it's everyone's in darkness i I know that's just a horror thing so we're gonna have the nice atmosphere but i noticed it would talk to me as well Mm. turn on a light yes it i wasn't being funny when i was asking about the electricity it just struck me every single apartment that we go into they've all got the lights off and it you know it's that very traditional as you say semi-gothic gloomy moody 
lighting with just night lamps or something. But you know, it's during it. It's during the day. <laughs> I, the, the movie is set in Brooklyn in what is you know a massive snowstorm. So maybe that's messing up the, with, with the electricity a little bit. We also know that this is not you know a wealthy apartment building either so may- maybe a lot of the tenants can't afford to pay their electricity bill i don't know i don't think it's really explained in the movie but you know it- it's the traditional horror lighting basically i think it was just a cinematography choice so that it definitely was out. but just something that we noticed and i think the movie is ultimately fairly predictable i think especially if you've watched horror, a lot of horror or a lot of creature features you can kind of predict where the movie's going to go mm. how it's going to play out but again, that could survive. Who's yeah. not going to survive? Ultimately, like that could just be us because we've watched a fair few things. Yeah. But the movie knows exactly what it is, and if you accept it for what it is, I think you're going to have a good time. Yeah, with it. I agree with your negatives or nit- nitpicks because we, we both did really enjoy it. I would just also like to single out some positives, like some standout things for me. The director seems to be doing a lot of cool things with with the camera, considering this entire movie is set within this apartment block we don't ever venture outside into brooklyn it's very much contained to to indoors how we get to meet or even just first glimpse a lot of the tenants on different floors i thought that was quite creative as as well i really like that and just hearkening back to another movie that we watched last year which was set entirely inside an apartment block evil dead the evil dead rise i think a lot of complaints people had for that one was we didn't see enough of other people in in the apartment block it was again just contained to that one floor basically (laughs) i uh, i really appreciate in this one you know we get to explore the different floors we get to see the different tenants i quite like that i think the pacing issue that you mentioned is kind of tied into we do get a big emotional story in this well i say emotional story there's there's a family drama going on as well and we spend a lot of time you know establishing like the dynamics between daughter stepfather mother new baby so that kind of is a bit of a distraction against all the creepy spider stuff. But I really enjoyed it, nevertheless. And I, I, I thought it had a good payoff. Also, with the, the family drama side of it, there is a character that's constantly mentioned, Charlotte's father, who seems to be a big plot point for her, but we never actually see. So ultimately, it's did he even need to be that big of a part of the story? I think it's because, obviously, there's her relationship with her stepfather is a running thread throughout. I think they could have done his story without including that because I feel like it just added time. Oh, I see what you mean. So like, I see, yeah, I see what you mean. Like they could have established the dynamic between her and her stepfather without the mention of the... Not even just the mention, just to concentrate on it as much as they do. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't know what the running time to the movie is, but it... It's an hour and a half. An hour and a half. So it's, I mean, that's average. It is. It just, to me, it felt a bit long. Yeah, yeah. I think if they could have chopped like 10 minutes off, this movie would have been just a perfect length for me. Yeah, I think maybe we did need a few kills that were a bit more close together than, than what they were, yeah. but potentially. But as of when we do get the kills, they were a lot of fun. The kills are great. I, I had a lot of fun yeah. with the kills, but specifically spider-based kills yes. are always fun. And also, just hearkening back to the predictability element, there was one character that made it through all the way to the end that I was not expecting I think both took both of us by surprise. No, and that, that was, I enjoyed that. No spoilers, but yeah, someone made it that I was not expecting to make it. <laughs> I've also seen a lot of people commenting on the trailer they're saying, well, spiders don't sting. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, venomous spiders do bite. It's a type of sting, but the name sting for the spider is specific to the plot and it will make sense once you see it. Yes. Something else that uh, kind of made me laugh is the topography of sting the title the fangs coming down for it we've seen that like three times in the past like year and a bit yeah even just last month with abigail we saw the fangs yeah that's true we can't have this become an overused topography now yeah i guess yeah i know those who know will 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 know but yeah like aussie horror it's it's killing it at the minute and i, I love it as well again the acting absolute stellar performances just in terms of you know how good they are at doing american accents Alila Brown, especially, thought she was great. I mean, she is the standout. Obviously, her name is a little throwback to Charlotte's Web. Well, I'm assuming so. I'm assuming it has to be. It has to be. This is a is it a Screen Australia? Yeah, it production. Is. Uh, yeah, so they're knocking it out the park. It's a fun little creature feature if you accept it for what it is and just go in intending just to have a good time with a monster movie, a nice little creature feature. You're going to enjoy yourself. Yes. You know, absolutely. And that's how we went into it. And we're pretty happy. And we're we're very, very happy. It's a good one. 
I would recommend it, but as I say, I don't think it's going to be for everyone just by virtue of the fact that it's about a big spider <laughs> going on a rampage. But yeah, very good movie. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Let us know. Have you seen Sting? What did you think about it? And, uh, you know, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.